Welcome to Brandstorm, the podcast that talks to the people behind America's brands. I'm Dan Trzinski, president of Platypus Advertising and Design. And I'm Nancy Christopher, PR director at Platypus. If you're an online marketer, don't go away. Our guest today is from the world's leading competitive research service for online marketing. Please welcome Fernando Angulo, head of communications at SEM Rush. Thanks for joining us, Fernando. Hi, everyone. Glad to be here today. So you're out in the Czech Republic. This is, I, yes, I, I don't know, uh, have we ever done an international podcast? I don't think we have. I don't think we have either. We might have done Canada. Oh, I'm going to feed the, the first one. Nice. <laughs> yes, especially over in, uh, is that considered Eastern Europe? It's Central Europe. Central, Central Europe. Europe. Okay. Yeah. Don't say in Czech Republic that we are Eastern Europe. We are Central Europe. Uh, okay. <laughs> Central Europe it is. Now, you've been with SEM Rush for, well, actually from its humble beginnings in 2008. Tell us about your company and how it started really as a small business and then exploded into a global leader in what, 10 years? Yeah, it's going to be 11 years. Uh, it was 11 years la- last year. And of, of course, we uh, were a proper startup with about uh, 11, 12 people, most of them only developers with really great ideas, but we needed to introduce some marketing effort in order to be uh, more recognizable or globally. But the beginning of SEMrush was uh, a toolbar uh, that is called SEO Quake. All the people who are related to um, SEO, to search engine optimization, uh, maybe remember that tool, uh, SEO Quake. So SEO Quake was... And it is still a free tool that everybody can use in their browsers, in Mozilla, in Chrome, and they can have all type of metrics, traffic, uh, domain authority, uh, who's the owner of, of the website, a brief a side audit of the, of the audit, how good are their internal linking, how many external links do they have. So the major uh, KPIs for SEO are there for free. So that was the start of SEMrush in, in, at, at that year. Right now, of course, we grew up a, a lot. We are about 1,000 people. We are in four countries. We have six offices all over the world. Three of them are in, in the States. One of them is here in, in Europe, in, in, in Prague. The other one is in Russia. We have one more in, in Cyprus. So we kind of grew a lot. But we have still that sense that we are uh, a startup, you know? Yeah, it grew a lot as putting it on the mild side. Explosion is more like it. So, Fernando, who should be using your services? So, the people who want to have online visibility, they need to use tools like SEO Quake services like SEMrush. Uh, why? Because they need, to, they need to earn the exposure of uh, on, online marketing, having SEO, having uh, social media channels, having content marketing, and of course, learning about what their competitors are doing. So all those four uh, strategies, and of course, the business intelligence behind it, is what we are offering to everyone that wants to have online visibility. Freelancers, agencies, brands, corporates. So if you have an, a web page, that's the thing that you need to, to, to use. From the beginning of if you are uh, already a professional, because we have some uh, technical tools, very, very deep technical tools. And of course, we have uh, some of the basic ones to start uh, over with the, um, with the platform. So how do you help online marketers and communications agencies like, like ourselves? Well, in that case, we are uh, data providers. We are not offering any kind of uh, consulting, but we create, we develop the tools uh, for agencies like uh, like yours to uh, deliver better results uh, for their clients. So we are kind of the added value for, uh, for for an agency. So we can have a lot, lot of information that agencies uh, agencies can use and of course we can make more easy the reporting uh, files that you, you generate for your clients and uh, we can have more campaigns more uh, strategies ongoing strategies at the same time as i mentioned before you can run your content marketing strategy you can run your social media strategy and you can also perform a check of, of your website in a daily base and Adding to all of that, we recently include a platform to check uh, what is happening with your competitors all over the world in every single search engine. We call that tool uh, Traffic Analytics. So we can 
check the traffic. You can check the traffic of your competitors, the sources, all the sources of traffic, direct traffic, organic traffic, social media traffic, paid tracking. You can check all of that. And that's part of, part of the tool as well. Can you get into some of the basic tools uh, for some of our listeners that are maybe do-it-yourselfers, how they work and what, what are the things that they should be looking for? Yes, sure. Well, I, will, uh, I would say that sounds like a lot of tools, right? right? At the beginning, we started with only two tools, uh, the keyword research tool, which, uh, which is uh, made for keyword research. If you want people to find your company, your services, your product, you need to, of course, use keywords inside of your content. So Google is going to index that and it's going to show that on, on, their, on their results. But that's something that companies, brands were doing the last 10 years, 15 years, or maybe more since the search engines uh, appeared. Right now, you need to have a complex strategy. More uh, platforms are getting the attention of the people. So for beginners, this is a plan. You need to check uh, what are the topics that are more uh, popular inside of your uh, niche, inside of your, your industry. Uh, let's say if you are selling rental houses, if you're offering rental houses, or you're selling departments, uh, I don't know, in California, whatever, you need uh, to have your web page. In order to have exposure for that web page, you need to create content for that web page. And uh, what we can do for you is to give you insights about how people are searching for those type of uh, products, for those those types of apartments. So if you search, if you are trying to attract people for your rental houses in, in California, you need to understand how people are searching for that term because that's a broad, a broad keyword. There are many, many people looking for that, but that's not how people are searching these days. People are searching more a long tail. So they uh, search sentences, their phrases, are really long. Uh, so in that case, people are searching not only for uh, the rental houses, they're searching for also apartments. They are searching with details, rental houses with pools or rental houses for uh, families, or can I use a rental house with my, my pets? So those changes are keywords and you need to put that keywords uh, inside of the content that you're offering. Uh, two years ago, uh, Google has changed a lot the way that they're working with results. So most of the results that they, they are showing are their own products that are called SERP features. So in SEMrush, we are giving you the insights of which keyword uh, contains which uh, SERP feature. So maybe you are searching for the same same thing. Rental houses in California, you will have a location, uh, you will have a, as a search result in the first page of Google, a map containing the list of all the agencies that are uh, offering that kind of services. The second result will be an explanation of how to rent a house in California. The third result will be a video or could be a video or could be images. All those results are the search features and they are Google products. So there is not any other company working working for that. So we uh, in SEMrush are giving you the insights of where exactly you can be and where your competitors are in those type of results. So that's the way to start. First, check the topic, pick the topic that you want to talk about, and then check how popular it is and go for the long tail keyword in order to make the difference. Your latest tool reveals a lot about your competitors. What do you think makes SEMrush, or as we say in America, SEMrush, better than your competitors? Well, in this case, there are several keyword research tools. They are really great. Some of them are good. Some of, the, of them, they don't have just enough data. We are uh, including uh, most of the keywords that are appearing in a daily basis. So, for example, uh, for the keyword iPhone 11 last year, we had that keyword during the uh, 2018 because people were searching. W when the iPhone 10 was just launched, People were searching for the aspects, uh, the aspects of the iPhone 11. So that created a new keyword. We already had that keyword because the popularity of those uh, search queries is increasing. So our database is very fresh. It's really large. In terms of, if we are talking about with numbers, we have about 60 billion keywords uh, right now in uh, more than 150 countries. 60 billion. Yes. Whoa. If you want to work globally, 
you need to work with uh, tools like SEMrush because, okay, you have an e-commerce, you want to uh, sell your products in, in, in the U.S., of course, it's a big, big market, but maybe people from UK are also interested. Maybe people from Australia are interested. How you will catch their attention? You need to have the right sentences because English is also changing. The way people are searching is changing in every single uh, country. You need to have the knowledge about how people over there are searching and you will find that information in a, in a platform with a large database as ours. So let's talk a little bit about content marketing, because obviously your tool is identifying keywords and how your competitors are ranking for specific keywords. But let's stay on your real estate uh, metaphor for a second. So say we are a senior living housing project in Milwaukee. We'll just go in our hometown for a second. That's the type of person we're looking for. We're obviously looking for seniors uh, or, or children of seniors that are uh, looking to put their parents or grandparents into a more comfortable environment. What type of tool is going to help us? Saying senior living in every other sentence also makes it, I look at some copy and websites and I go, this is garbage. Kind of like this question yeah. is running on and on and on, but it's, it's saying the same things over and over again. And it's like, that's not how people talk or how content wants to read. It looks like they're writing for search engines. Yes, that, that's correct. That, that's what I, uh, I was saying uh, a, a couple of minutes ago, that Google has changed the way that they are showing the results. So it was a search engine. Right now, it's an answer engine. So most of the people are searching by questions. Nobody's searching for senior living in Milwaukee, but they are searching for a specific questions. If we say for any type of industry or, or, or the one that, that you just, just mentioned, we need to ask, if you work in an agency, if you have that customer service, we need to ask the customer service how people are searching for this type of services, for this type of products. We need to ask them face to face. We need to have an interview with them. So we generate a list of questions. How people are finding my product, my services, then how you can solve their problems, how your services are making their life better. So we have all the questions that are around this. And that's the way you can start creating content that is really valuable today. Uh, we have three types of keywords that are delivering great results these days. The first type of keywords are the question keywords. Why the question keywords? Because that's how people are searching, not only uh, typing on Google, but, uh, but also with voice search. So most of the people are asking a lot of questions by voice search and they're receiving one single answer. With that kind of uh, results, we saw that in, the, in Google, in the first, per the first page of Google, if you ask anything to, to Google, for example, can I, can I drink tap water in, in, in Milwaukee? Is that possible? Google's going to tell you, yes, because this company says this and this and that. You will receive that result. That result is called a feature snippet. So in order to have the visibility that you deserve, you need to earn a feature snippet. For doing that, you need to create a content based on question keywords. That's the first large part. So question keywords are the best one for feature snippet. The second portion of keywords that you need to use are keywords that contains comparison triggers, like for example, compare, price uh, versus, uh, for example, if you are working with rental houses, uh, whatever, uh, what is better Which you're in, inside your search query? House rental or a house or buying a house? What is better, a mortgage with this bank or a mortgage with this one? This type of results, when you have the trigger comparison, is also delivering feature snippet. The more uh, feature snippet that you will earn, the better visibility you will have. That's how the, the search engine is working today with this type of results. Uh, we made a research uh, recently, actually um, a half year ago, based on how voice search is, is working and how people can can be there because most of the specialists, most, most of the professionals are speaking about, okay, voice search is going to be the future. Voice search is, is the next big thing. But we wanted to be very sure about what is there, right? And we uh, did a research based on 20,000 20, search queries in the U.S., uh, analyzing how Google is responding to that and how uh, they are structured. And we found out that 80% of the results that Google is de delivering through assistance to voice, through, through voice search 
is coming from feature snippets. And also, one of the uh, greatest guys in, in marketing, well, one of my favorites, the, uh, the founder of Moss, right now with the Spark Toro, Brad, Brad, Brad Fish, Fishkin, uh, during a conference in Bound Marketing last year, he found out most of the search queries are not ending on clicks. So uh, companies are not receiving 50% of the clicks. That means that this type of results, the feature snippets are receiving most of the uh, information, most of the attention of the user. People are searching for something. They are not clicking on any of the results of the page. Why? Because Google is already offering the, 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 the response. Yeah. The information on a beautiful feature snippet. And that makes totally sense with the, the research that we made. So if you create content with uh, with question keywords, if you create co content with comparison keywords, which is what people do, and also there is a one last trigger for these feature snippets. The third type of keywords that are triggering feature snippets are the preposition keywords. And those are really, really great. So for any type of preposition, any kind of preposition, for example, for, like, with, without, you can have also a feature snippet. If you say iPhone uh, with uh, two SIM cards, for example, that is only sold in China, uh, but people are searching for that in the state because they, they want to have two phone numbers in one single phone, you will have a feature snippet. Um, house with a pool in the street, uh, wh whatever. Also, you are not asking anything, but you are using prepositions in your sentences. So if you are using preposition in your sentences, you have the possibility also to have a feature snippet. So those three type of keywords are the ones that are triggering feature snippets. Uh, during our research, we found out that we found that the type of feature snippet, and that's something that uh, if you, um, if I can share this with you, in all digital industries, only 50% of the companies the biggest, the biggest ones uh, in the um, digital world are using this type of technology, this type of products from Google. The rest is kind of not doing it, which is an opportunity for everyone right now. My mind's spinning because of the different things that you just brought to light. So you say 50% of search queries are not resulting in a click because of these feature snippets that Google's already giving you the information that you need. Now yeah. it's making the measurement police go crazy because how do I measure my effectiveness of my ROI if I'm not getting the traffic coming to my website? That's you know the whole object of SEO, isn't it? Oh, yes. Th that was the major KPI for, for SEO. But with this kind of changes, there are a lot of companies. I can I can mention a, a couple. For example, Citizens uh, Citizens Bank in, right. in the U.S. Uh, they're not anymore measuring the effectiveness of the traffic, the amount of traffic that they are receiving. They are measuring brand impact. So if people are searching your brand name with anything else, so you have a um, a brand, uh, your brand, and the keyword, whatever it is, how to open an account on Citizens Bank. Okay, you have your brand. So the brand impact will be great. It will be even better if you have a feature snippet. So the, the most feature snippets you earn, you will have better uh, reputation online. You will have more qualified leads because they already know who you are. They already know that they can trust you. They are uh, searching for you. And then they yes. may just be walking into your bank and opening up an account versus doing something online. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, how they are measuring is the number of feature snippets that they have for the most uh, relevant keywords uh, that their users are uh, using for, for, for finding them. So the most relevant uh, keywords that uh, they have uh, are around 5,000. Right now, I, I, I saw a couple of days ago how many uh, feature snippets they have with those keywords uh, because they are in the first page of Google. They have already 545 uh, keywords with a feature snippet. So 10% of those keywords, they are already in the position zero with that feature snippet. That's something fantastic. Another example, companies like Booking.com, for example, they are doing the same thing. They have about 17 million uh, keywords ranked all over the world, but they need to have uh, the feature snippet. Why? Because their affiliates, the companies that they are, uh, their, their clients, hotels all over the world, they want to be first, of course. If you want to right. have a great vacations in the south of Spain, you want to have a resort there, the resort wants to be first. But the first result 
or in this case, the zero result, the feature snippet, is going to be Booking.com. Why? Because they are working where uh, top 10 places to visit in the south of Spain, top 10 places to go for vacations on Mexico. You will have a beautiful feature snippet from Booking, not from the top resorts, because nobody else, only big companies with SEO teams are working with this kind of uh, results. And this may sound really basic, but can you tell us what a feature snippet is? Yeah, sure. When you are uh, entering a search, search query, you are typing, typing something on Google. For example, I can say how to boil an egg, right? Any, anybody can do that. How to boil an egg. I will receive there. This is in every country. There is a feature snippet in the 200 countries that Google is working right now. And you will receive a box, an answer box. That is say, place X on a large uh, sales pin, step one, step two, you will receive a list. In some cases, it's a, just a paragraph of, of text. It's a, it's a piece of text. You have an, an image over there. The second result will be maybe videos, maybe some, some pictures. The first result for this search query, where I am right now in the Czech Republic, it is not in the first page. So the first position, organic position for this uh, search is not anymore in the first page of Google because there are just Google's uh, products here. Uh, so the feature snippet is the answer box for that question that you are entering. It's a beautiful box. It's a big one. If you are in a laptop or if you are on a, on a desk, desktop, you will see it. It's like, I don't know, 25% of your desktop space. And who provided that content on that search that you just did? Oh, yes. So through the research that, that, that we held last year, we wanted to analyze how Google is picking the, the results for, for this type of feature snippets. And we saw that for, uh, there are three types of feature snippets. The first one is the paragraph feature snippet, which contains 262 words, sorry, uh, 42 words and 260 or, or 262 characters. So that's the paragraph feature snippet. It can contain an image or, or not. The second type of feature snippet is the list feature snippet, and that's the most common one. The question uh, keyword that is triggering the most is the how to keyword. So if you want to create content, you need to add list inside your content, and you need to put in your H1, H2, H, H3, whatever, in your, inside your titles, the how to keyword how to boil an egg, how to open a bank account, how to close my Instagram account. For all those questions, starting with how to, you will receive a list feature snippet. Whatever that starts with how to, I believe in every single industry there is a how to question, you need to have the, the right format. So uh, how many uh, businesses in Canada? I do this, this search query on, uh, on, on Google. The first result for the last uh, three years was, of course, the Chambers of Commerce of, of Canada. The last year was the Wikipedia. This right. year, starting starting this year, is a Salesforce. Uh, I believe you have here about Salesforce, the, the, the CRM service. So Sel Salesforce is a SaaS company. They're they are selling sure. their software. Why on earth they, they are having this type of result on a feature snippet? Because they have the knowledge, they have the information, and they have the right amount of words. 46 words, 242 characters after that question. How many companies, how many businesses in Canada? And there you have uh, Salesforce. Wow. So word count's important. So you will, the SEM rush, you, will your tool tell you those things of here's how you model to get ranked that way? Model your yes, content? Yes, that, that's something really cool that we are implementing right now. We have a tool that is called SEO Writing Assistant which is a plugin for Google Docs or for WordPress. You just need to download it. It's free. Uh, it's um, integrated with your SEM Rush account, of course. You have a piece of content, 1,000 words. We're going to check how many times you're using the right keyword. We're going to check the, the content. So we are using uh, machine learning there to understand if the topic is original, if, if it was plagiarized, or we're going to check how good it's structured for this kind of content, for feature snippet. You have lists, you have uh, paragraphs, you have tables, you have images, you have videos, we're, and we're going to give you a scoring. The scoring uh, will tell you how good this, is, this content is for Google. We have a second type of uh, scoring, which is going to tell you how good this content is for people. So 
the content is for Google, it will tell you, you need to add this, uh, this backlink, these links, these external links, you need to earn backlinks for these other resources. So it's an entire assistant. There are uh, not many tools that are doing that with, with the scoring, with a scoring system that is really working very well. We have several clients uh, that are asking us to create content for them. Actually, a couple of months ago, we opened Content, market, um, content Marketplace. So if you want to receive content already based on a topic with all the uh, structure and all the highest ranks with our scorings, you can also select that marketplace uh, and just order content for yourself. You need a different piece of content. You can order content from that with the highest uh, ranks uh, as well. So yes, of course, we, we, are, we are giving those insights as well. And those, we're providing those services as well. So, Fernando, what impact has all of this had on 2020 and what's trending right now in online marketing? Well, at the beginning of this year, everybody was, was aware about the, the, the core update. Actually, it was on 13th of, of January. People are still tr- trying to understand how this is going to impact. We have a tool that is called Sensor. We measure what is the impact on the Google algorithms, the fluctuations of the Google algor- algorithm. And we saw a, a, a pike there. Uh, something is happening all over the place. And nobody knows exactly right now where exactly is happening. But Google is saying that the context of your content is the most important. You don't need to think about the keywords anymore. You need to, to, to think about the content and the context for, for your content. So maybe that's something that will uh, enter here right now with their artificial intelligence that they were launching uh, three years ago, the, the rank break algorithm. Uh, maybe that's something that is going to be so supported by, by that. But for us, in, in terms of uh, search marketing, in terms of the needs that we saw from our users, most of them are really, really interested on working on different type of platforms. So if you are searching for a product, you're not going to Google. You are going to Amazon. Most of the people are searching products on Amazon. That uh, change already already happened. If you want to uh, have the information of a product, you don't go to Google, you go to Amazon. So we are going to integrate, uh, actually we have a tool based on AV testing for uh, products on, on Amazon that is called Sellerly. So that's something that, that we see as a really high competition for Google, but it makes a lot of sense. Amazon is all about products. Google is all about information. Uh, we need to have both. So uh, that's, what, that's what we are trying to implement uh, this year. Tell us a little bit about how your pricing model works uh, for these tools. You have several different levels when I was looking at your website. So can you walk us through those offerings? Sure. We have all uh, tools. Uh, most, most of the tools, I would say 90% of the tools, are available, uh, available on uh, all the pricing uh, packages that we have. The starter package that we called Pro Package is $99.95 uh, per, per month which includes all the databases, all the tools, all the information that, that it can have, except for the uh, traffic analytics tool, which is more interesting. We also find out with a survey, it's more uh, advanced and more interesting for uh, big businesses, big, big corporations. The amount of data that we have there also is kind of more difficult to, uh, to analyze. So. Excluding that tool, you have everything there as well. Uh, we have a second level, which is the Guru level. You have access to historical da- data as well. In the US, we have historical data for the last seven years. Uh, so you can see what your competitors were doing uh, the last seven years on BPC, what kind of advertising they, they were delivering, what were their, their listing on Google Shoppings, what type of products, what was the price of their products on their Google sh- Shopping list, or what was the position in the, that they have in the past. And the last, the last level is, of course, the business level. You have the full access, wide level uh, reports. You have the access for traffic analytics. And of course, we have several, several type of integrations. We have uh, Google Data Studio integration. We have Adobe Analytics integration. And of course, we provide an uh, API access. If you have your corporate dashboard, we are providing that as well. And if there is sometimes that Companies need something more. We also provide, of course, uh, custom solutions for, for for any company. And what were the prices of the Guru and the business 
Yeah, the, the uh, as I mentioned, the Pro is 99.95 per month. The Guru is 199.95 per month, and the business is 399. So it's kind of very affordable for yeah, a, it's very any type expensive. of business. Yeah, right. yeah, that's excellent. Talk to a little bit about support. Okay, so if again, I'm going to do the $99 thing, and I'm I want to learn more about this stuff. Do I have access to support from your company as well? Oh, yes. In, in that case, we always wanted to be a very transparent public company from, from, the, from the beginning. So we created our um, presence in, in social media. We have uh, groups for support. Uh, we have open uh, discussions every single week on, uh, in our Twitter chats. We have an academy. We, two years ago, we opened an academy. So you don't need to be a SEMrush uh, paid user to be in cer- certificate on uh, SEMrush. But you just need to have the time, educate yourself, uh, receive the certification. You can put the certi- certificate at the end of the course in your in your LinkedIn account, and you will learn everything about any single SEMrush tool that we have. So our uh, SEMrush Academy is there, the support through social media. And of course, that's that's for everyone. If you're a SEMrush client, you can write us anytime. We had a, a chat box o- o- over there. Uh, we have about 60, l- let me check. 75 people in our customer service. So if you are in the US, UK, Australia, Canada, India, wherever English countries, we have a people that can pick the phone at at any time. So I guess the follow-up question to that is, so what's the best way to connect with SEMrush, S-E-M-Rush, and those various outlets that you just described? Oh, it's a great academy. We we have um, the academy in English and Spanish. We're we're trying to have it in, in Portuguese, in French, and then oh, actually we have we, we have some courses in French as well. So it's a very very interesting academy. You can enroll to not only to uh, f- for learn, learning about the tools, but also about digital marketing. Because of course you want to use the tools, use the tools. But uh, you want to have the knowledge about how to create your strategy overall from the beginning. You can have that type of information as well and uh, the amount of stu- students that, that we have is about 300,000 by the end of last year uh, so it's kind of very popular so the best way to be in contact with us is through our uh, email that's the direct connection is mail uh, at uh, semrush.com uh, or you can go to any social media Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, wherever you want, you can follow us there. You can ask some something there. Or, you know, we have a monitoring uh, tool as well. We can see whatever you're writing on Quora, Reddit, wherever you want to ask a question, there's going to be a, a, a person that is going to be uh, answering to that question in every single platform around the web. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us today, Fernando. It has been a great discussion. Yeah, great education. I'm the first international guest. Right, Thank and the first international guest. <laughs> Thank you for under, uh, understanding my, my English. No, I oh, love your it. English was wonderful. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, have so a great day. You too, Fernando. And if you have any questions for Dan or me about today's episode, please feel free to contact us on our LinkedIn pages. And if you like what you've heard today, please don't forget to share, review, and subscribe to Brandstorm. This is Dan Trzinski along with Nancy Christopher at Platypus Advertising and Design, an awesome company that creates perceptions that influences choice. We hope you'll join us next week for another episode of Brandstorm. Brandstorm.